Alright, so we'll take this plug out. And that will let us insert the uh, M12 threaded rod so that we can uh, adjust the clearances on the counter shaft bearing. So before we get started with the shimming process, we're going to um, we're going to, to take out the shims that are in there. Unfortunately, I don't think I can do this with one hand. So this is easier with two hands. These races c will come out um, pretty easy if you can do them evenly. So um, take out the shims that were in there to start with and set those aside and then put the races back in so you can start with zero and do that to both sides Okay. as you can see I've now reassembled the uh, main shaft and the counter shaft back into the transmission uh, end plate and um, in the process of uh, installing the, the main shaft I also finished installing the first gear assembly um, so I, this is the first gear and then below this is the first gear synchronizer cones um, the outer ring for the first gear synchronizer cone is all steel and there's not a replacement for that in the uh, in the kit, but there is uh, a replacement for the carbon fiber inner cones. So um, installed that, installed the bearing, uh, installed the O-ring. This is the new O-ring. There's also a needle cage bearing inside of first gear. Um, interestingly, to install that needle cage bearing that's inside of first gear, it looks like it looks like this. Um, this has to be inside. These bearings are actually slightly tapered and uh, the, the needles are slightly tapered and they won't go on the shaft um, at least not easily all by themselves. They need to be actually be inside the uh, gear before they'll go down on the shaft. So the next stage, and I also, as you can see, I cleaned the gasket area. So the next stage is um, to put the the case back on to load these bearings, uh, measure the end play, and uh, and set it into tolerance. And I'll, I'll show uh, how I do it. Hopefully, I can. Okay. So the next step is to partially assemble the transmission and set the uh, clearances for the main shaft, the input shaft, and, uh, and the counter shaft, which is behind behind that and uh, the counter shaft extension. So uh, the, the, the manual says to do the main sh the uh, input shaft first but I, I think the better wisdom um, is actually to set the counter shaft play first and this is actually you know been discussed on the forums. Um, since the counter shaft is is uh, advised to set to a preload I think you're better off setting that first and then coming back to the um, input shaft which is supposed to be at a clearance. So I'm going to uh, and go with the counter shaft adjustment first. So the first thing you do is you actually take out the shims that are in the transmission and, uh, and so the shims are removed, uh, the races are, are reinstalled, you, you assemble the counter shaft and the input shaft and the main shaft and then you, um, I just put, you can see I put, uh, I think six, uh, eight bolts in, uh, just uh, snug them up to uh, to set the clearance. And then I have this uh, Rube Goldberg um, set of clamps and steels and my uh, metrology um, indicators to uh, help me measure this. But this is just a... Uh, an M12 by 1.75 threaded rod. Uh, there's a, a nut here. There's a nut on this side. Uh, you can actually see it's inside there. 
and uh, and you do need um, a spacer behind this this nut. I just found one in my toolbox that a little shaft collar that fits inside the the plug hole and uh, and allows you to to snug this threaded rod up tight in you know to the counter shaft and and then um, the indicator you want as um, as parallel to the axis of of the shaft as you can get it so that your measurement is accurate and then um, and then we just try to move this back and forth now I tried to set this you can see my indicators reading zero if I push it all the way in I get it to read minus one and if I pull it all the way out it reads 26.8 so I have 27.9 mils of travel so I need to put in it's advisable that this have two mils of preload so I need to put in a shim that's uh, about 31 mils thick so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my my set um, of shims that showed up here right here I'm gonna find the shim that's uh, closest to 31 mils uh, the range is 0 to 2 mils of preload. Some places go as high as 4. So I'll try to find a, a spacer that gives me, a shim that gives me that preload. Okay, so sorry for the confusion in that previous um, recording. I, I realized afterwards that in my head I was thinking that I wanted to target 3 mils of preload because the even though the book specifies two mils of preload. Um, the recommendation on many um, experts is to go a little bit on the tighter side. So in my head I was thinking three, which is where my math came from to get to 31, um, even though I had said two. So to get to 31 I found that these two shims in my um, in my shim kit, this is, I just organized them out. Um, so here are the shims for the counter shaft. Here are all the shims that come in the kit for the input shaft and here are the shims that I believe are for the counter shaft extension. So um, I found these two, these give me 30 and a half uh, mils of shim thickness and so that should give me about two and a half mils of preload for the counter shaft. So I'm going to put that in um, and then I'm going to reassemble um, this whole thing again and measure the input shaft and then do the input shaft. Okay, so it's it's uh, reassembled again just the main shaft, the counter shaft, and the input shaft and uh, and I had to adjust the brackets for for the indicator a little bit. Um, and uh, I did I did insert the threaded rod into the counter shaft and double check to make sure that it was indeed um, not showing any any um, end play at all. So now we're going to try to measure the main shaft, and this is a little trickier because there's a there's a radial play in addition to the axial play, so it throws the numbers off a little bit on a sensitive um, indicator such as this one, but we'll do our We'll do our best. So if I push this in, again, I'll try to do it with one hand, I can show a minus, uh, a minus, it looks like minus one mil or so, and if I pull it out, I'm showing, I don't know what is higher than that, a second ago. I'm showing 33 mils. So 33 if I pull it out and oh now it's all right hold on I'm gonna <laughs> the uh, gauge got a little squirrely so I'm gonna readjust and put the camera down and come back. So after doing this with both hands I'm managing to show a total travel of about 
33 to 34 mils. Now that's it's not exactly repeatable because of the uh, as I said the radio play allows the end effector to kind of go up and down and that throws the numbers off but what I'm going to do is I'm going to so to adjust to the factory spec which is 0 to 2 mils of end play and again the the experts really try to aim on the tighter end of that so I'm going to aim for about a um, a mil or so of end play and um, and so at 34 that means I need to find a 33 mil shim so I'll look for a 33 mil shim would give me one mil of end play uh, a 32 mil shim would give me two mils of end play so I'll look for a 32 to 33 put it back together and measure it again okay so here's the results um, in, my, in the shim stack that I got uh, with the kit I had one 34 and a half mil thick shim and one 31 and a half mil thick shim. Um, 34 and a half would technically give me a half a mil of preload, um, which is outside of the range recommended. Um, even though some people drive it to a little tighter, I'm not sure I want to go preload side. So I'm going to go with the 31 and a half, put it back together and see where it sits. If my previous measurement was accurate, um, then I should have about three mils of end play, but as I said, that measurement was tricky and it was a little bit um, variable. So uh, I'll put it back together and see what I get, and hopefully there's a, just a smidge of, of end play and this will be okay. Um, I, I'm also at this point going to go ahead and ch finally change that seal because I, I may not have to pull the input shaft out again. Um, not that it's hard, I guess, once you disassemble it, but I'm going to go ahead and, and change the seal out now since uh, I shouldn't be having to, to take the, end, the uh, input shaft out much anymore. Okay, so I put in a 31.5 mil, mil shim, and uh, it's now showing between 2 and 3 mils of end play clearance, uh, depending upon... <laughs> each try that I that I push on it. So uh, I'm satisfied with that. So now we'll disassemble this, um, the case from the adapter plate one last time and uh, and start building up the rest of the insides.